Hello, today we're here to do a comparison with Douglas Spotted Eagle from Sundance Media Group. My name is Adam Gittens with HTS Ag. And we've got the new Evo 2 with the dual camera. And we've also got the Mavic 2 Enterprise dual. And we just are going to have a little conversation comparing, contrasting, talking about the differences, the pros and cons, and what, uh, what you can expect with each of these different aircraft. So, Douglas, share a little bit about your thoughts on this. Well, first of all, it's not a. It's just not. It's not a fair comparison. It there. Uh, people want to compare these two because they're both uh, dual systems where you've got a thermal camera and an RGB camera. Um, but in terms of, of the cameras themselves, there is at no point can you have a, a reasonable comparison. You've got this guy over here that is significantly greater in resolution than what we have over here, uh, both in the RGB spectrum and in the IR spectrum. So yeah, they're both small platform UAs or, or uh, unmanned aircraft, but um, it's kind of like saying that a Formula One car and your Toyota Corolla is a car, and the only difference is the engine. Well, there's pretty significant difference in that engine. Right. So we want to be sure that we're we're kind of comparing apples to apples. So from the, the the camera side, which is what everyone wants to compare, they're incomparable. The, the there is no way know how that the uh, enterprise can even remotely come close to doing visually what we can do with Evo 2. Uh, past that, oh, go ahead. Yeah, let's talk about that for just a minute. So sure. with the specs that you've got on that Evo 2, mm -hmm. what I really should have sitting over here to compare it against would be a Matrice 210 and an XT2. Much That would be a much closer, much more appropriate comparison because the the resolution of the thermal camera here is the same thing as the X-T2. Uh, this is a 30 hertz uh, thermal imager, um, so you know it's a lot closer to what we would be getting with the, the uh, X-T2. Of course, this is a much smaller frame, but this also flies longer than does the Matrice. Right. So that if, we're, if we have that conversation, now we've got something to, to compare. But I think the other thing that becomes important is we start talking about platform sizes and where right. we can get them into and, and whatnot. So I'm a huge advocate for this type of a platform, this small, what we call cargo pant drone. You know, something going to go into a cargo pant pocket. You bet. It is how, really how the military is going to look at these kind of things. Um, so a couple places that these are different is this has 360 degree, 360 degree obstacle avoidance that is a little more sensitive um, than what we're going to find over on the Mavic. I think you're aware we have both. Right. Um, we uh, have a long, much, much longer flight time. This is rated at 40 minutes. I can tell you that out of the box with brand new batteries, we're seeing flight times that go a bit beyond 40 minutes um, in, I would say, standard conditions. In optimal conditions, we've gotten over 45 minutes. That's uh, amazing. Out of this aircraft. Yeah, so it's got a great perch time. Um, it uh, has a 360. The, one of the things that is really great uh, about it overall, too, is it's this one is built so that there are uh, no ventilation points on the top. And so while Autel doesn't call this a water-treated drone or a water-capable drone, uh, this is a water-treated, water-capable aircraft. Uh, some folks saw, maybe saw on our YouTube channel or saw uh, on, on our blog, we had this out in torrential Hawaii rains. Now, you don't want to fly in torrential Hawaii rains. We didn't put it up because it was raining. We were flying, and if you know much about Hawaii, rains can come in about as quickly as you can blink your eyes. So we had to bring this back from uh, about a mile out, and it was in rain the entire time. So that's another difference uh, between the two, I think, that's really great. Uh, a couple other things that I love about the Evo 2, especially versus the Mavic or the Evo 1, is the noise print on this drone is remarkably lower. Uh, they changed the angel the angle of the the or the pitch of the props, uh, so that makes it a, a much quieter drone overall. Um, you'll notice that it, it, versus the Mavic or the Evo One, this is a significantly heavier aircraft, right? Than than what we have as well. So this has a bit more bulk. It's made out of a different kind of plastic material. Uh, um, so just another thing that I really like about it. One of the things, Douglas, I really thought was interesting about the Evo 2 platform is also the ability to change cameras. Mm -hmm. And so they have a, a slew of different cameras. There's going to be, I believe, four available for that. That's correct. And 
just being able to swap out that payload. Now it's not super quick to do. You're gonna to have to take a few screws out. It's a little bit involved, but just the fact that it is possible, you can buy one airframe and multiple payloads right. and be able to change those out on a small airframe drone. That is a first in the industry, really. It is, it is. Uh, Unique pioneered the concept of chain interchangeable cameras, and those are fast change cameras, but they haven't, uh, Unique was never successful at coming out with a full line of useful cameras where uh, Autel has done that. So Autel's got the, the full resolution, or the, the 645-12 resolution. They've got a 320 uh, thermal imager. They have an 8K on a half-third sensor uh, in, the, in both the dual and a single camera. And then they've got the one that everyone is really excited about, which is a 6K in a one-inch sensor. So there's four different models that are available there. Right. Now, we don't want to ignore some of the really nice benefits of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. So let's talk just a minute about those. One of the things that I think this aircraft really has a, a nice advantage of is the interchangeable accessories that go on the top of the drone. We've got on here right now, we've got the uh, strobe light, which is really nice. Uh, we've got built-in lighting that can, out of the box, uh, qualify for night flights. But very quickly, that comes off. And right in the case, we've also got a spotlight that can go on there. And the, the really unique thing right now that no one else is doing yet, a speaker, a loudspeaker. So we've had uh, several different public safety departments that have expressed interest in the loudspeaker option to go on that drone, be able to fly that in and broadcast a message in multiple mm -hmm. different scenarios where um, maybe there's someone they're trying to rescue that they can't get to and they want to be able to communicate with them and get some information to them. Or in the not as desirable scenarios where someone's held up somewhere and there's danger involved, you can send the drone in instead of a person and be able to broadcast that message to someone. So there's some really nice accessories that go with this uh, Mavic 2 Enterprise. And then the, the other thing to keep in mind is we've still got to be able to match a budget. Um, as many features as we have in the Evo 2 and as great of an aircraft as that is, I would take the Enterprise Dual over no drone if that was the decision Absolutely. I had to make. So if that's, if that's what your budget is, if that's what you've got to be able to work with, this is still a great aircraft. It's certainly not uh, something you're going to regret owning. But it certainly, when you, when you put them side by side, as you started the conversation, Douglas, there is no comparison there. That aircraft, the, the Evo 2, is really more suited to be compared to a much larger airframe with a much, much more expensive camera. Sure. And to, uh, to, to bring it back around, though, to make it a little bit more fair comparison, if we place the 320 camera on here, we're a lot closer to what that is. Right. Um, and budget-wise, we're tremendously closer to what that camera is. So a couple of other things to, that, that we might comment about this one, and I think you know that I'm a fan of Autel uh, over the DJI platform for a couple of reasons, the ASDA being one of the big ones, uh, the American Securities Drone Act, um, the, the security of information is a big piece for us because most of our clients are federal. You bet. Um, so that's a big piece. But uh, other things that are, that are there is we know that on the Evo 1, e, uh, Autel has come out with a saddle hard-mounted lighting system. I would not ever want to violate NDA, but I can tell you that the hard point mount system for the Evo 2 has seven hard points on it. We're only going to put two lights on there. I'll let your imagination figure out the rest of it. So I, it, the big point is, is that Autel, at price levels, at quality levels, uh, they are aiming absolutely right at the heart of what their competitors are doing. Absolutely. Um, so it is a it is a great alternative choice at any budget point, but it is tough to you know, coming back to that first comment. It's tough to reconcile the eight thousand plus dollar cost of the Evo two against the cost of of a Mavic Enterprise. But when we look at the Evo two with the uh, half resolution of the the three twenty, we're a heck of a lot closer to to what's going on there. Um, so I think that that's a, another piece that that can be compared the infrastructure or the in, in the uh, ecosystem of the Mavic is a little broader than the ecosystem that you're going to run into in any other brand. I mean, let's face sure. it, DJI has got so many facets of everything that they deal with that they have well thought out uh, their partners, their automation systems, um, some of the infrastructure that drives the drones. You have a number of different companies that are already compliant or, or uh, partnered with um, 
the Mavic like Drone Sense and some, and some of these other companies that are out there that are working with the Mavic that currently aren't working with the Evo platform. So there still are benefits to, to both systems and agencies just need to look at what their concerns and, and their budgets are, I think. Well, Douglas, I think the, the key point here is when you have competition in a marketplace, oh, yeah. it drives the whole industry up. So I'm excited to see some other entrants into the marketplace. I think it will continue to push DJI. It will continue to drive great new products from Autel. We we happen to work with both products and we enjoy both. So uh, we're happy to answer questions on either product if you have them. And with that, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up. All right. See you on the next one. Thank you.